everybody, it's Karen from Lion Gate Farm. Today, for today's felting video, I'm gonna teach you how to make this adorable little nest. You don't need any special supplies, just your little scraps laying around. And we'll get to it, it's a quick one. All right, today we're making this little nest. Three little eggs. I mean, the number of eggs you make is variable. And I made this out of scraps here. You know, I always have a scrap bag available of locks or um, roving and I'm sure you do too. So I'm going to teach you how to make this little nest and so let's get started. First thing you're going to need is some core wool. Everybody's got core wool and we're going to make a six inch circle approximately. Approximately a six inch circle just laying it out doesn't have to be exact. I'm just tearing off little pieces, overlapping them. We're just gonna get this going. So the first thing we're gonna do is build like the outside of the nest. Just a little six inch circle. You can obviously make this as big or as little as you want. I do recommend core wool. This is my base layer that I'm building on. The only thing that I really think you need is to make sure it's like kind of even. A little seed in my core wool. Just make sure it's a little even thickness. You don't want it too thick. We're doing that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of color, an underneath color. So I'm using this brown, light brown. Again, I'm going to lay this on top. This is a loosely felted project. It's not, especially right now, because we're going to form it into a, a nest. So you want to be able to manipulate this stuff later on. Again, I'm just tearing off small pieces of this light brown. And then my birds, you know, my birds, you can make this true to nature and make it all greens and stick looking. Mine are going to be bright colors. My whimsical birds. If you have a multi-tool, make this go a little faster. I'm just using a pen tool with two needles in it. And then I don't want it to become one with my felting pen, so I'm gonna just take it off periodically and just keep stabbing it. Check the other side. So let's see, it's it's coming together. I love this core wool that I use. Um, we source it locally. It's an organic core wool, and they get. I actually know someone who raises the sheep that actually go to this place. They make beds, and the core wool that I sell has. It's just the cutoffs from their organic, you know, their their wool beds and. Um, comforters that they make and it's awesome it just felt so well so now we have our little base now we're going to add our color so what we're doing it can be it's random it's very random so I'm just going to start adding I do add like from the center out with these locks these are the copper color locks that are listed on my website there isn't very many of these left, I don't think. I'll put a little orange in here. 
And again, it can be random. Here's some green, little green pieces. Why not a red one? And then for fun, I don't know if anyone's ever used this. This is Angelina fiber. I want a little sparkle in my nest. Because Angelina, you need very little, very little. I'm just pull it out. If you, you can see it's making the nest sparkly. And then you go, you know, if everybody's got scrap yarn and scrap threads. I'm just gonna think about like birds do. They pick stuff up all over the place. So I'm just gonna add it on here. There's a reason I'm adding it now. Because I want the next locks I put on will hold Angelina does not felt on its own, the sparkly stuff. And you know, threads and ribbons, they're not really wool. But now we're gonna use some placeholders. It's a pretty pink one. A white one. So these locks I'm putting on now will help keep all that sparkly yarn stuff in place. Doesn't look like much right now, just a hodgepodge. Notice I'm not going all the way out to the edge because I'm going to finish that with some locks in a, when I'm done here. This is a little bit of gray. Thin. I'm putting a thin layer here and there just to hold all this stuff together. Peel it off. Remember, you got to keep peeling it off, and you're like, oh, it's kind of solid, but we don't want it to be too solid because bird nests aren't. And now I'm going to start pelting in the middle here. Now you got to think about how big do I want this nest to be. You know, there's other ways you can do this, but I just kind of make a little fold. Don't worry about what the outside's gonna do. And I'm gonna, like making a dart when you're sewing, just fold it in. And I'll make another one over here. There's nothing scientific about this, but we need to make it into a bowl. And then one over here. Notice I'm not looking at what's happening on the other side because it's random. I'm going to now. So here's what we got going. So I want you to use the edge of your felting surface. Start tacking. I did three of them. This one didn't hold up very well. Well, do it from the outside.
going to switch to my 38 star spiral needle because it's a little bit stronger than what I have in there. I'll tack this better. You can see we're getting starting to get a little bowl here. Now, like I said, this is loosely felted. This is not a hard felted project. Now what I like to do, and this will form the bowl, is I have some white, this is some white pole worth soft. There's a few threads. That's okay. I like to line the inside of the nest with white. Soft, squishy. Notice I keep turning it. The more I felt along here, the more it's turning into a little bowl. I'm going to start bringing my little edges in. Bird nests are not symmetrical, they're haphazard. Everybody's found a bird nest, I'm sure. Birds are pretty amazing how they weave those little sticks together. Bird nests around here are full of sheep wool. So see, we have this little tiny nest here. And now I have these little blue faced luster locks from my sheep. These actually came from my sheep named Storm. She's silver, and I'm going to add them along the top. I'm going to start on the inside, up here on the edge, and then I'm going to finish and poke them in. So the effect I'm going to get is this, like little tiny locks up here. Be careful not to poke yourself here. I'm poking down into the side. And you know, even though I I used very little core wool and then I used the outside, you can see that we've got a good half an inch of wool here. So I'm going to continue just going around the top here, adding these in.
so once I have them all tacked on the inside, I'm going to bring them all around to the outside. I do that using the corner of my felting service because this is round. a quick little spring project. We're gonna make some eggs here in a minute to put in it. Maybe next week we'll make a bird to put in it. Do you see how I'm rolling it in? I'm rolling it towards the color locks. Just grab those locks and roll it down a little bit. Then you're gonna come back up. You can hear my cat Stewie in the background. He's quite a needy little cat. Need a little bit more white in here. All right, so once you have all of your little locks attached to the top of your nest, the nest is ready for some eggs. So you're gonna take a skewer. You know, I always, my trusty skewer and some core wool. Doesn't take very much. Kind of judge with your fingers how big you want your egg to be. I really just concentrate at wrapping by my thumb to get that cone shape. Just like we made the big the big eggs. Now we're going to make some little eggs. Needs a little bit more. It's not fat enough for me. You can see I'm, I'm already working towards that egg shape on my skewer. I'm going to poke this in so when I pull the skewer out it all stays in there. Key is to wrap really, really tight on your skewer. Then you pull it out and you almost have an egg. You want to tuck this end in. Remember, you're going to add color to your eggs, so you want them just a hair smaller than you want them with the core wool than you want them to end up. I'm using this blue. It's almost the same color as my pad. I'm going to pull a piece off. I'm just gonna roll my egg in it to start with. Tack it down. I 
a little piece for the end. Your eggs don't have to be blue, they can be any color you want them to. If you line your nest with a soft gray, you can do white eggs and they look really cool in there too. The key is to get it nice and smooth. Lots of pokes close to each other. If you're using merino, it takes way more poking than this Coriadale does because it has less scales. As I'm working this in, I make sure it, to round it out by poking around. Don't need a square egg. finish with this tool. And then we're going to add our eggs to our nest. Oops. Everything's sticking to my hands today. So we have three little eggs in a nest. Now you can add sticks like it's on a branch. You can add a spring. I did this one on a spring with those eggs. That Those springs are hard to find. These are easier springs to find. You can mount it on here. You would just take a little thread and sew it on. It's kind of fun. Kind of fun. Next week, maybe we'll make some birds. <laughs> 